let's go before the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We ask you, hallelujah, to be with us and stand by us. Lead us, guide us, direct us, and correct us continually, Lord, hallelujah, just and make intercessions for us. Give those prayer warriors, Lord, that when we in our battles, that they will have a mind to want to pray for us. You said one would send a thousand, but two would send 10,000. So we need the aid now of others to help us to make it through. We need somebody, and it took the time to pray for us. We need that today. And so we're praising you. Lord, I'm asking you to come in the midst of us. Teach us, show us, give us more strength. Because if you don't give us no strength, we ain't got none. We need you to give us more strength to be able to just to make it today, tomorrow, and the day after. Hallelujah. And so we just praise you right now. We need our filling station. We need to be filled with your word. And so we're praising you and asking you and the host of heaven, open up our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Title for today's Peace Be Still. This is where we got to come to, guys. Peace be still. I want to break that down as best I can. Peace. Peace is a stress-free state of security. You have peace when you have security. When your security factor is messing up, it's kind of hard to hold your peace, right? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to pay this light? How am I going to do this? So, state of peace. So that's security. And then it says a calmness. Because when there's security, there's also calmness. You're calm. That comes when there is no fighting or war. And he goes on to say, everything coexisting in perfect harmony and freedom. So you got to have your freedom to be able to do that. That's the word peace. And that's what we have to gravitate to and hold on to. Amen. Be still. The instructions to be still in Hebrew means to let go. Stop striving, slacken, and let drop. Peace be still. So that's what he's saying. I ain't going to strive with you. I ain't going to fight with you, okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop. I'm going to let go. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. I'm not going to hold it. You see, the thing that keeps us and keeps us going and everything else is when we hold on to stuff we ain't got no business holding on to. When it's there, it's there. Handle it, settle it, and go on. But don't bring it on with you. Let it go. When you say, I forgive you, or you say, God bless you, from that God bless you, you let it go. Because that's what you said. I'm putting it in God's head. God bless you. So we're going to go with the scripture. Then I'm going to break this scripture down because I need you to get an understanding of what it's about. Amen. So Mark 4, at verse 37, he says what? And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beat to the ship so that it was now full. Okay, now we're saying it's getting full of water. Go ahead. And he was in the inner part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and said unto him, Master, care not that we perish. In other words, you don't care if we die or not? Go on. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obeyeth? What he's talking about is the faith of the disciples. Their unawareness of who God is. And every day we sometimes don't really have the understanding of who God is. Because we're so bombarded with all the stuff that we're going through. As I said, I understand what's coming into your head. And so it's hard for you to clear your head and go, yeah, but, but God, let me see now, God, God. But we don't really have a true awareness of what he is. So basically he was saying power. You don't know the power in the name of Jesus. You don't know. If you knew the power in the name of Jesus, Jesus resting at peace, awoke in calmness. He didn't get up, what, what, what's going on? Huh? What, oh, how'd that happen? Wait a minute, just a minute. All right, let me think, let me. <laughs> no, he didn't do any of that. He went out, and the first thing he said is, peace. And so you go, peace? Yeah, 
I'm going to the direct root of where this is. Who am I saying peace to? I'm saying peace to the wind because you're the one that's causing it. So I'm saying peace to you. Sometimes we have to go to the root of what's actually making somebody do what they do. And you don't know that. And the only way you're going to know it is that you're going to have to ask God. A lot of these people coming at me hard and angry. What's the real reason that they're coming at me like this? Because once you find out what the real reason is, they come to you and you direct your words to that reason, that brings peace to them. What happened? That's what people say. What happened? This happened. This, this, this. Okay, okay. So something hit you. All right. Then peace on that. Right now, whoever's behind that, who sent that to make something happen to you? We already know that it's Satan. We understand it. So we're rebuking what it is. Don't look at the person. Rebuke what's causing them the problem. Rebuke it. And so the first thing he did was rebuke the wind. As soon as he rebuked the wind, there came a calmness because the calmness was the wind wasn't blowing the water up against us so hard that it came over and it looked like it was going to drown us. No. Once stop the source of where he's coming from, the wind, he told the wind, stop. That's what peace is. And then he says the calmness came. And that's why we have to understand getting into the source of things. Don't be so quick to judge. Don't be so quick because somebody reacted in such a way. If you stay calm, if you're with the Lord, if you understand who the Lord is in you, then you can stay this way. So every day you got to keep refreshing your calmness, your peace in God. You got to keep understanding, Lord, I know it is not I that is doing anything. It is you in me. And so I'm calling upon you and me. Could you help him over there? Because I can't do it. I know where I'm at. And so, Lord, open up my understanding and make me to see. And that's what we got to keep understanding. In all of our walks, that's who we are. We got to understand we're walking with the creator of everything. Everything. Good and evil. So there is nothing that he doesn't know about good or evil. He knows it all. And he's the creator and he knows how to bring it forth. He said, those I love, I chase them. And so some of the things that are chasing, Lord, is this you or is this the evil one? I don't know. But if it is you, tell me what you want me to do right now. I'm ready to stop whatever I'm doing. I'm ceasing from that right now. What is it that you want me to do? That stops in its tracks all of the other stuff. Then that's what he wanted because I'm bringing you peace. And I'm saying, be still and know that I am God. Please understand who I am. Don't be caught up in the fear and all of this craziness. You know my mysteries because I'm going to show you my mystery because you want to know my mystery. Others don't want to know my mysteries, but you keep coming and you keep showing that you want to know my mysteries. So because you want to know my mysteries, I'm going to show you my mystery. Seek me and seek what my mysteries are when things come against you that you cannot understand. Seek me. You don't have to go ask this, the doctor, this, this. You can go right to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because as soon as you come to the point of saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then automatically you already are in place you should be. So he did. He rebuked the wind, which is the cause. Now we know that Satan can stir up a wind. And that's the tool he uses. He has Prince Power there. So yes, he can move this wind and do everything else. But I stopped that tool you sent out. I stopped it right then and there. Peace. Peace means stop. That's what you got to go. Cease. Drop all of that. Because I'm going to bring you to calmness. All right. Jesus calmed the sea. That's who we know. We know who we praying to and who we know who we're rebuking. Now you could take Jonah, for instance. He said, this is coming against you guys because of me. And he said, well, no, no, you hold. We do. Well, we struck it. Okay. You know what? Throw him over. Because God already had something to catch him. And so once he caught him, then they said calmness came up there. Once he was going, calmness came. Well, God was chasing him, not you. He wanted him. I need to put you back to where I told you to go. Sometimes God allows the car, this stuff to come against you to turn you about and send you to the place he told you to go. Or he wants you to go. You've got to come to the deeper meaning of what God is. Every time I do, I go like, Lord Jesus. Every time I think I got something, I ain't got nothing. Because he just keeps getting bigger. Okay. 
So the question that he asked after he did all of those, why are you fearful? You're scared. Why are you so scared? Well, I'm scared, Lord, because I really didn't know who you were and I didn't know the power that you had. And had this not happened, now I'm beginning to understand who you are and the power you have. Before you were just an ordinary man, but now I'm seeing something coming out of you that makes you different from the ordinary man. Guess who's supposed to have that power? Something that's coming out of you that's different than the ordinary man. So that's why we have to get more of him in us. Because if we don't get more of him in us, then we rob ourselves of so many things. God is not going to put people and things in your life that is going to hinder you from being with him. That's what you got to get in mind. What God want to know is, can you handle, if I add this other thing to you, can you handle it and still do my business? Or are you going to divert you and pull you away from worshiping me? Now, that's going to be the problem. So I'm not giving you something that is going to pull you away from me. If you pull away from me, it is not because I did it. It is because you're choosing because it's a much easier road. It's a much softer path like Locke. Locke took that path, but he didn't know his family was going to be kidnapped, that Abraham still goes have to come down and save him and his family and the whole city. And then when he came back, he still didn't get it. He still went back into the city. He went back in the city and then the mercy and grace of God had to go back. Say, I'm tired of this city. It's crazy. Send them the angels and pull them out of there. Thank God he at least caught it that time. Okay. All right. No, no, you can take everything, but, but you can't take these two men. So he did recognize the spirit of God this time. I'm saying all of this here is to wake us up and give us examples and give us understanding of things that are happening in the past, present, and the future. Nothing is new under the sun. Same, different way, but nothing is new. It's the same spirits doing the same thing. And behind it is the same entity. God can save you. That's what I tell you. You're walking around in fearfulness about different kinds of things that's put on you to try to make you fearful and scared. Their job is kind of lonely if there ain't no people there to work on. And if there ain't no people to work on, then they have to come up with some other criteria and other things. They can pronounce all kinds of things on you if you believe it. And then they can pretend like they're healing you and pretend like a whole lot of things. That's why I said the people of God have got to know what God said, not what man said. Because you're going to have to walk by faith and not by your sight, meaning walk by the spirit and not by your carnality. And it's going to take a while for you to get to that switching up to be able to understand, no, I have to walk by my spirit and not by my carnality. But this is so logical. This is this. Yeah, it's all logical the way they presented it. But is it the real way it is? I need to check with the source. I got to still go back and say, Lord, you got to give me an answer on this. Because it seems right. Should I do this or shouldn't I do this? And many times I've had to do that. And he said, no. And I go, no, no. And I said, all right, all right then. And it's not until years later, sometimes just months, sometimes just days and minutes that I find, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's according to how I need it. But I know one thing, said, Lord, I trust in you. Amen. This is the last days, and we have to prepare because this truly is the last days. Book of Revelation, Matthew 24, Daniel. All of it is telling you this is the last days that you're living in. We may be raptured tomorrow or 10 years or 20 years. I don't know when. No man knows the hour. But I know this. This is the time is for you to start prepping yourself and getting yourself to the understanding that I need God and I need to stay with him. Because if I don't, I'm going to perish with everyone else. Wide and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Narrow is the path, and few that find it. So we got to get on that narrow path. Biggest factor is, next to evil, the biggest problem is the lukewarm. Saints are going in through this way. Lukewarm and evil, all is on the same side. What does that mean? It means that if you keep crossing back and forth over to evil, and that's lukewarm. One day you're here, one day you're here. That's lukewarm. And what he said, you got to get out of that maze and stay 
I declare that I'm on this path and this path only am I going to be on. And so that means that you got to fight all every time lukewarm come into you, do something that's contrary to the word of God. You got to fight that. But you got to call for reinforcement to help you fight and keep them from pulling you over to that lukewarm, deadly state. That's what we got. It's last days. We got to fight to stay out of that lukewarm position. And everything that they own is pulling you into that lukewarm position. Is that not scary? See, when I look at that and I go like, oh, my God, then who can be saved? That's what the disciples even said. Who can be saved? With men, impossible. But with God, who would you want to be with? I want to be all things are possible with you. Every day is a choice, and every day we have to fight to stay on God's side. And it's tough. But it ought to be a common time with you that you understand this. You need to understand If somebody is going to be walking with you, they have to be over on your side, walking where you walk it. Solomon, all this power that he had on this side with God, when he started bringing in the negative side of Pharaoh's daughters and all the rest of them, up to the point of a thousand, how could a man not be pulled over? And he was pulled over and started worshiping their gods. Did he make it in? I don't know. But I'm telling you, the example is there. The example is, no, if they can't walk with you, why do you want to be with them? If they don't want to walk with you, if they've already said, no, I don't believe in, I don't want, why then would you keep playing with that? That's where we go off. We're not strong enough to fight this kind of warfare. I tell you that right now. We cannot fight this kind of warfare that's coming against our mind right now. There's no way you can stand up against this giant. This giant owns everything. And so how are you going to fight him with your carnal mind? You can't possibly do it. You have to have something. That's what he knew when he came down and gave you the Holy Ghost. He said, except I'm in you and you accept you call upon me, we can't save you because you're already destined to die. I mean, it's destined to be separated from what your calling is. You're already there. We're fighting to stay on God's side because the other side is already wide and broad and ready for you to go with them. Amen. Let's go down some scriptures now. Matthew 16, 16 through 19. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I don't care what you do. I'm building my church, and I said the gates of hell is not going to prevail against my church now, meaning my people and those who want to be my people. Hell ain't going to break through that. That's why we got to stay in fellowship. Go on. What is that? And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Hold right there. And so what is he saying? He said, what I'm telling you is law. And so I've given you the rules just like I gave the Israelites 10 commandments. I'm giving you the law of the New Testament. This is what he said. I'm building my church up on this, and I will tell you how to bring my people to me. And they'll come. My people will come. Go on. From that time forth began Jesus to show his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, be raised again the third day. Raised again the third day. I'm telling y'all. This is the way I'm going out. I'm not hiding anything from you. This is the way I'm going out. I told you what my church is going to be and how it's going to be stand up and what I want you to do with the church. Now, this is how I'm leaving. This is him, our Ten Commandments over here, when we're talking about being with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm building my church and hell ain't going to come against it and it ain't going to stop. Verse 22. Okay. What's it say? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him 
saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the thing that be of God. Hold right there. Wait a minute, I just made you bishop. And the next breath, before I can even get things out, Satan is using you already the same way he used Eve. Now he's coming up here almost saying, this ain't going to happen. You're not going to die. So wait a minute, you don't even have a clue why I have to die. And so who did he say, get thee behind me? He went to the source. I know who made you say that because you just don't know. Everything that's presented up front, that don't mean that that's that. It's just presented up front. We got to go to the Lord and say, Lord, what's behind this? We got to get to the source. We got to be wise. Amen. 24 says what? Then said Jesus unto the disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See, there is going to be a cross, but you're going to have a different kind of cross. So you're going to have a test. There's something that you're going to have to make a decision about. Are you going to be with me or are you not going to be with me? That's the cross. That's what you're going to have to bear. For whomsoever will save his life shall lose it. For whomsoever shall lose his life for my sake. You understand? I'm trying to tell you something. If you go with man and man's ways, you're going to lose your life. Because man is always going to come up with something to help you hurt yourself. He's always trying to figure out some ways how to kill you. That's his job. And I'll use you against you. I'll make you contradict what it said. Now, since this beginning, where are we at now? How many churches are now in the lukewarm area and they refuse to come out of it? They stand on it. And I go like, wow. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about churches. And they won't come out of it. You're not tearing down this institution and this tradition. We want to follow this tradition. Okay, now if you want to be part of us, join our tradition and you can be accepted. But if you don't, we're going to isolate you and keep you away. Well, thank you for isolating me and keeping me away. I don't want to be like that. So this rebuke is for correction. He had to do that because if you read in the other book, when he saw the people and the others who were around, disciples was watching, he said, then that was the reason why he had to do it so that everybody understood. No, no, don't listen to what Peter just said. That's from Satan. That's why I'm rebuking what was said right there, because it's not of me. He's going to change my words before I can get them out of my mouth good. That's what Satan does. Amen. Matthews 20, 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord. Thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace, but they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? Well, everybody's there. They all know Jesus is coming to town. What happens? A whole lot of people saying, Shut up. Be quiet. Don't be bothering the master. A whole lot of people are saying that and agreeing. And the two of them had to come to a point and say, I don't care what you say. And they hollered out loud, the loudest, even more so. In other words, I am not following what you said. I'm here for healing and you can't do it. Think there wasn't no doctors in that crowd too? Yeah, y'all can't do it. I got to go to who can do it. And so the two of them did it, and they had to press over all of that pressure. People, shut up. You're, you're, they had to press over that. Something in them said, no, 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 no. You ain't shutting me up on this. You are not blind. I'm blind, and I want to see. So I'm not going to stay blind because you want me to be blind. Go on, he says what? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Some people have to be blind so they can see. A whole lot of people that can see and blind is all get out. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? They're not seeing who they should be seeing. Caught up in the carnal world and not in the spiritual realm. And we have to fight every day to come into the spiritual realm to get out of the carnal realm. That's what we're doing. There is a division between us and them. And you can't let people cross over that and bring their suitcases and everything. Tell them they're going to camp in with you. Say, no, if you camping in with me, you camping wherever I go. You're going to have to walk with my God because I came from where you are and I'm not going back. I know what that's about. So you got to walk with me. I'm not letting spirits in my house or anywhere else that is not in harmony with me. Because what's going to happen is them spirits are going to mount up and mount up and mount up. And you can't see them. But then they're going to start doing little things. And then you're going to notice that something ain't right here. And boom, this, this ain't right. So what's, what's going on? No, it's not right because there are spirits lurking. And so what do you have to do? If you have a lot of people coming through your house or coming through your business, you got to stop and rededicate your house to start all over again. You don't have to see the termites eating your wood. You just see the little remnants of it. Is that right? And you said, we got termites. So you said, well, we're just going to let them keep on eating then as long as I don't see them. Uh Uh-uh. Whatever you get out to get that out of there. Is that right? I'm trying to tell you, you can't let these spirits come in. And then because as I said, after a while, they'll start to try to rule. They'll start to influence. They'll start doing things counter to what you are accustomed to doing. And you don't realize it. But before you know it, you're not the same place you were when you started out. Satan is riding on everything and anything that he can get into you and bring you down. That's his job. We're going to bring you down. And you get to a high position. Yeah, I definitely want to bring you down. Because all those who are following you going to bring them down with you. This is real warfare in these last days. And you can go out there and play all you want and pretend like, you know, everything's happy. Ain't nothing happy out here. I don't know if you know it or not, but every day they're closing up something and stacking prices. Every single day they're doing something contrary to what God wants us to live and the way we want us to live. Every day they're pushing their products every day subliminally pushing their products and if you go to sleep on it believe me when i tell you one day you'll wake up and find out oh my god where's all these snakes come from is it really that serious are you over dramatically are you just dramatizing this too much or something i wish i could say yeah but no it's real we're in the last days when you're in the last days everything steps up you don't back down now it steps up even more why because my time is running out, and I want to get them before I go out. And you got to know that. You got to know this. Your life depends upon your choice. And your choice has to be to the point where you say, For the Lord I live, and for the Lord I die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I'm not living for self, because he that will save his life is going to lose his life. And he that loses his life for my sake, So it's opposite of what Satan is pushing. Satan is pushing, be scared of death, be scared of death, be scared of death. No, I say be scared that you don't make it into the kingdom of God. Because if you don't make it in, you're talking about eternity of suffering. You ain't talking about just a few hours, a few years, then you get out on parole. No, no, no. There ain't no parole here. He didn't talk about no parole. He said example is what it's going to be. You're going to look there and know that's what I came out of. In case your mind's still going to go on, but if all anything try to come in, you're going to say, Mm-mm, I remember that. I ain't about to go against my God. Here's my example. Every time I get so far away from God that I can't see that, I got an example of what he delivered me from. No matter what it is, your mind has got to be set on eternity. We already know these bodies going to drop, okay? We know that. But where our mind goes, where we go, That's what we're trying to save. That's what we're trying to hold on to. Trying to hold on to the very thing he wants to take from us. Our mind. That's our soul. Is that we remember all the things he wants to take our mind and do what he's going to do. But if you know him, you should hold your peace. So let's go to Mark 9, 20. They brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tarried him. And it fell on the ground 
and wallowed in foam, and asked his father, How long ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes he has cast him into the fire, put him in the water to destroy him. But if thy canest do anything, have compassion on us. Go right there. Can you imagine a child that's been tormented? What kind of hope do you have if your mind is so messed up and it's so controlled that you just do things to hurt your own self? Now, most minds, it's so that they get mixed up and they want to hurt others. And do you see a parent that is watching their child go through this torment? This is what we got to understand. He's trying to give us an example here, saying, no, I'm not going to let you be tossed in the water, thrown in fire if I'm in you. I'm not going to allow somebody to do that. No, I run this. I know how to do it. I gave you what you had to do. And today you're in a blessed place because I blessed you here. What kind of God would you want to serve that want to hurt other human beings? What kind of God did you have to do, strap bombs on you to go in and blow yourself up so you can live in the next world and we'll take care of your family in this world? Who are you serving? This is where we're living it. We're living in it now. You're not seeing what they're doing in sacrifices and everything else that they were doing back there, but they're doing them in secret now. We hope that they don't come out as broad as Hitler was doing it. They said we learned so much about the anatomy through Hitler's his experience and all that stuff. He said that was one good thing to learning about the anatomy because they could just do whatever they want to do with a human body. Well, see that for the good. So let me tell you something. When you do wrong and you know you did wrong, can you walk around and know that you willingly killed a couple of people and then it don't bother you? You know it, it tear you up. I shot a pigeon and, and I was messed up for days because I just want to see if the BB gun worked. But after that, I go, oh, God, just think about it. Oh, Lord, why did I do that? It just tore me up. Thank you, Lord. Please don't let me hit nobody. Lord, don't let me hurt nobody. I couldn't live with it. But every day they're programming our kids to see necks cut off and chopped up and everything. And the kids, are, oh, oh, yeah, ooh, all right. And then just getting in their minds. It's getting them into a, a position where they can socially accept it. That's the thing. They can accept it. Well, yeah, you know, that's the way it is. No, that's not the way it is. That's the way they did it. And you're not saying anything about it until it's your kid. Then you got plenty to say. Are you understanding what kind of world we're living in? That's the biggest thing I want you to say. Peace be still. We got to do everything we can to keep our peace and let it be still because we're living in a world that used to be a time. No, no, we don't want to hear stuff like that. That's too gross. We don't want to hear. Is there anything hid from the kid now? We used to be, we had to tell you about the birds and the bees. Kids can tell you more about the birds and the bees than you know about the birds and the bees. Why? Because they got all of this information that they can go to and get anything they want. And believe me when I tell you, Satan is putting their minds to go there and see it. It's going to take the grace of God to keep them from going and looking at this and looking at that. Because all of that is to entice you and away from God. It's still to kill you early. If I can get you early, I don't have to worry about you later. That's the attitude. We have to wake up and say, no, we're in a very, very cold-blooded world. And we better realize. And so don't you go out there naive. You better know what you're doing. And you better know what your children are doing. Because if they can't get you, they sure will be trying to come through that way. Amen. Verse where I stopped it. Well, and Jesus said unto them, if I can believe it, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy mind. Unbelief. I think I believe. Because every time I look at a mustard seed, I say, Lord, I don't have the faith of a mustard seed. Just to run the pastors out mustard seed years ago. I still got that mustard seed. I ain't got that much faith. Well, how do you know that you don't have that much faith? I didn't talk to a mini mountain. Move from here and move over there. They ain't moved. <laughs> tree pluck thyself up and move over there and he moved all right all right and believe me i used to do all that crazy stuff i still got to come up to get to that mustard seed faith i'm working every day to come to the mustard seed faith 
I mean, the words are there and the power is there. And I know it can be done, but I know where I'm at right now. And I know, God, you got to help me. That's what I tell people. I said, if you're hot, you're hot. And if you're not, you're not. It either is or it is not. And so why do you say that to the people? Because the people come up to me and say, I'm saved. And I said, that kind of reminds me of somebody running around the baseball diamond. He's on third base and he's talking about I'm saved at home. And he ain't got there yet. What's ironic is that he get home and he said, you're out. We're not saved until we're inside the gate. And then on top of that, Lord, please don't let me be the one to say, where's your garment? And be cast out. That'd be the worst thing for me in the world. It's to be there. I made it and then be thrown out. Lord, please don't let that be me. Please don't let that be me. Don't let me get all the way up in and think I'm okay and secure. And then say, where's your garment? Oh, Lord. Is that as bad as the ten virgins? I don't want to be part of that. It can't be, I barely made it in. I slid in by the skin of my teeth. No, 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 no. I walked all the way up in there. Thank you, Lord, because I started walking here on earth. And he'll tell me when I get there. Can't no guessing game about this. We got to know. And you won't know unless you start to walk toward what you know. This ain't about I'm saved. No, you're not. you saved to be saved. And you hope you get saved, but you won't be saved until you're there. Please don't let the devil trick you. Walking around, well, I'm secure and saved. What, so you sin free? Yeah, well, you know, I'm walking with God. No, no, don't talk to me like this. Please don't talk to me like this. Because I'll have to correct you. Paul wasn't playing around when he said, I'm working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And I ain't wrote no books like he wrote. If you're scared, I'm doubly scared. Let's get real. Please. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thy dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more in him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he was. And when he was coming to the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind comes forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Some things ain't coming out unless you want to fast and pray about it. But Jesus is always leaving us an example. He's always trying to tell us, you got to believe this word. In other words, you got to believe me. And if I'm in you, I'm the word. That's what I told you. I was the word. You got to believe the word that is in you because that's your spirit. That's God. But you got to understand something. We can't do anything with unbelief. And Satan is always trying to make us come to unbelief. Every day he's trying to work you that you don't believe that God is able to heal you. God is able to deliver you. God is able to move you away. We got to come to this understanding. This is a work. Every day we got to work at what we're doing. Every day we are working in our fields, God's fields, where he's at. That's my priority. I'm not concerned about what they're doing to get their own glory and all that stuff. I got to come and work in my father's field so that there is bread and food in his house so I can help others when they come to his house. That's what we got to come to and stay on it and don't move off of it. I'm on this side and that side. We can't keep going back and forth, saints of God. That's what Satan keep doing. He keep trying to take us back and forth. Don't let him take you back over there. Please don't do that. You come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his mighty word, He's never failed you yet. He won't. God will make a way out of no way. And that's what makes him God. And that keeps our faith going because we know that he moves things that others can't do. Help my unbelief. My faith and belief is going to be from fasting and praying. In other words, denying myself and getting closer to God. That's what's going to help me. Help my unbelief. Amen. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Keep him in perfect peace. Stay on thee, because they trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. 
for in the Lord Jehovah. Is that right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. Psalms 29, 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Do you believe it? He'll bless us with peace. We receive not because we ask not. And we don't search for it. How can we get it? But we got to come to this understanding. Amen. Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies. When you please the Lord, they got to be at peace with you. When you're at peace with the Lord. Amen. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Do you believe it? In me you have peace, but in the world, trials and tests. So why would you want to choose tribulation, trials and tests over peace in God? These words is his words and it's supposed to radiate in us and we're supposed to keep them in us because blessed is the peacemaker because we're supposed to be peacemakers and the peacemakers are supposed to be able to make peace for themselves but make peace for others as well. This is what it's all about. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man you ain't going to see the Lord without this peace and the peace he has to give to you. My peace, he says. So every day, what should you be striving for? His peace. And if we're going to get his peace, what do we have to do? Be still and know that he is God. That's what you got to come to. You got to be still. Stop worrying about what you think and how you feel and how people are presenting things to you. And go check with God and see what he thinks and what he feels and follow God. That's what you got to get in the habit of doing. Stop following man. You've been so indoctrinated to follow man that right now you take man's word over everything. Stop it. When they make diagnosis, when they tell you what's there is a storm coming in. So what? I'm trying to say we're in this world. We're not of this world. You want to talk about aliens? We're the aliens that they're talking about. Satan knows it. Satan knows we're the aliens. I thank him for distorting it all. Well, they're hiding things. No, I know I'm an alien to what you're doing because I'm not part of you at all. And yes, I do think much higher than you think. You're just thinking of dying. I'm thinking about no, after death. Be still. Psalms 46, 10. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. Whether you believe it or not, I'm still going to be exalted. Well, I don't believe you. That's your belief, okay? But I do believe it. When he said every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is the Lord, I believe it. Whether you don't believe it ever again. But you'll see. If you just keep on going the way you're going, you'll see. First John 3. One to three. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it do not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. No, we're going to be in spirit. We ain't going to be in this flesh. Go on. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That's where we got to come to. If we're going to be with him, we got to purify ourselves. We got to allow God to work in us. Get this straight from your heart. I'm looking at your heart. I know if you're pure in heart. I know who you are. I know what you're about. Amen. Second Thessalonians 3, 5. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. You got to be patient. Don't get all bent out of shape because things ain't going. God will answer you. God is with you. 
God is not a fall. God is at hand. God speaks right out of you. If you have his holy language, he talks to you. You hear him. You know that he's real. This ought to be something that hope that we have. And this is why we can come together and say, no, 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 no. All this stuff out there don't apply to us. We're not part of that mess. We got a whole different way of looking at it. Amen. Patient. Be still and know that I'm God. And don't question it. I will give you peace. Not as the world give it to you. Seek my peace. The world's peace is temporal. When we get God's peace, it stays as long as you want to be his child. I'm just trying to say right way, wrong way, God's way. Please choose God's way because he really do want us to hold on. I know it takes a lot to get here and to hear his word and rehearse his word, especially when you're going through all kinds of problems. But guess what? It's worth it because his word is going to strengthen you. Just hearing the word, being in the presence of the word strengthens you. It strengthens your spiritual man. So spend your time in praise. I can't tell you enough. I have to stay around praise all day long. And this is the only reason you're getting this lessons because the praise is opening up things I just can't even imagine. Amen. All right, Lord, you already hear us. You all know what we're about. We thank you for reviving us today. Hallelujah. We needed the revival. We needed to know that you are still in charge no matter what. And the gross of how big you are, we can't comprehend anyway. But help us to do your will in the corner. If it's a baby toe that we are, let us be the greatest baby toe in the world. With the ear, with the eye, whatever we are, a hair, let us be the greatest hair that we've ever been. Whatever part of this body that you want us to be, let us do our job in that area. And we'll give you the praise and give you the glory. And we thank you right now. Be with us and stand by us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
First time. 